Welcome back, guys. Today we're doing new chicken. You want to help me? Yeah. Sure. You're heavy. Ooh. You do this one? He's right, we're getting new chickens today. In fact, they're at the post office right now and true to form, I don't have any place to put them so we're gonna clear out a space and put them in here. Because these are nice boards. You want me to do it for a while? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your help. You're Last one. We're going to put it right here on the front. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. So here's my idea about these new chickens. I'm gonna take this old chicken tractor, and the reason I say old chicken tractor is because I'm planning on building a new one for this season's meat chickens. Uh, I'm gonna take this old chicken tractor and turn it into an outdoor brooder. So uh, let's pull it over to the shed so it'll have some more cover and get it ready, and then we'll go get the chickens. We're getting 55 meat chickens this time. That's the most I've ever done at once. So yeah, I'm gonna need a bigger space for them. I guess I forgot that, that didn't work last time either. right there because there used to be a tree there still need some pine shavings for them to walk around on and last night at tractor supply when i was getting their feed i was very tempted to just buy some of those those bales of pine shavings and then i thought you know what i can spend 15 minutes making my own pine shavings and save that 15 dollars so let's make some pine shavings That didn't take much time at all, and this is a lot more satisfying than just buying it in those little bales at Tractor Supply. Can I get a bucket full? A bucket full of that? Yeah. No, I need that for the chickens.
Here, you get you get this side. Okay. And I'll get this side. And I'll get in there and spread it around. Do you want to get in there and spread it around? Mm -hmm. I think that's I think that's a really good idea because you're short. Don't stand up and crack your head. I'm gonna use a plastic trash can to store their feed in. I've got an extra one here. Food's in the back of the truck, let's go get it. <laughs> Three bags. Three bags. There we go. Once I see the amount of chickens that we're getting, I might have to put another heat lamp in there so that they can have like half on one side and half on the other. Cause 55 chickens, I'm not really sure what that looks like just yet. You hear the chickens? I do. What are they saying? Uh, we're hungry, we're hungry, we're hungry. I bet they are hungry. They hadn't eaten in a couple days. They smell pretty bad, don't they? Yeah, they do. All right, let's open these boxes and see what we've got. Uh, I will say that I've never had them smell quite this bad and I'm hoping that's just a, a function of how many we've got. There's supposed to be 55 here and I hope there's not like a dead one in there or something. Oh, they look good. So these are Cornish Cross. Let's, I'm gonna count them real quick. See how many I've actually got. They're really hard to count. I guess I'll just count them when I put them in the chicken tractor. They're all good in that one. This one is the one that really stinks the worst. Because hopefully it's just because there's so many in this one. Okay, they're all alive. No, they're not. It was a dead one. There's a dead one in the corner. That's why it stuck so bad. Yep, get them out of here. One, two, three, four, 21, 25, 39. So there were 40 in this box and one dead one. Here's the second box, 40, 42, 48, 50. Okay, so there's, there's 54. So I just gave Hoover's Hatchery a call to see what they could possibly do with this dead chicken and uh, they were really good. Uh, she said they could definitely refund that. They guarantee the chickens for 48 hours after I get them, after the customer gets them. So she told me, she made a notation and she told me to call them back in 48 hours to make sure all the rest of them were okay too. So that's, that's really cool. I'm gonna get a refund on that chicken and uh, hopefully none of the rest of them are gonna die. But if they do, I can get a refund on those as well. So awesome customer service by Hoover's Hatchery there. We just got done with lunch and uh, we're back out here at the chickens and it looks like they're settling in pretty good. One sheepster's walking in the water. I know, I wish they wouldn't walk in the water like that, but I guess when they get older they'll stop.
If y'all have been following the living room remodel videos, that's some of the paneling that's coming off of the walls and the ceiling. And my dad just bought a new little shack, little outbuilding for his garden. And he's gonna use that stuff for paneling. He's, he's gonna upcycle it like I enjoy upcycling things. So we're gonna run those up to his house real quick, right? Lean it right here. Good old boy, no, it just ain't much help. Right, lately. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Watch out, bud. That's the worst place you can be, man. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> well, you can find a worse one. Yeah, I'm sure. Some of them are just pieces. I figure maybe that's all right. something I'm going to the whole thing, anyhow. Yeah. That show beats buying stuff. Oh, yeah. And really, if you leave the white out, it'll be a lot brighter in there. I would think. I'm getting pretty good tally already. Oh. <laughs> Is that enough for you? Thank you. You're welcome. It's nice. You can have those back. You want to leave? After all these years. I'm not yeaving yet. Watch, watch your fingers, watch your fingers. Not, well, yeah, pretty soon. Next thing I want to do is grab a couple of these slabs from up under here. Our pastor at church wants to build a couple of tables for the church. And so I'm going to take him some of these pine slabs right here. So we'll get these out, get them on the mill and get them leveled up and edged and uh, see what they look like. I just learned a very important and valuable lesson the hard way on my chickens. Earlier I was using this right here as a waterer and it was up on a little pedestal and they were uh, getting in here to get their water and evidently that's not a good thing because I came over here and one was in there drowned. So I swapped it and gave them this waterer directly on the ground. And it occurred to me that I've never used that water with chickens that size before. I've always used the one quart drinkers uh, inside of the shop in a smaller brooder when they, that, when they were that size. So uh, unfortunately I learned something today uh, the hard way. I, won't, I probably won't mention that to Hoover's when I call them in a couple of days because I, that was my fault. So here's what we've got to do with the slab. When you take a slab off of a tree, off of a log, it does the same thing as all lumber does. It dries and as it dries, it twists and it cups and it bows and it does all kinds of things that make it not so flat and not so straight like it was when you took it out of the log. So that's what happens with these slabs. And uh, Wood Miser had this, has this thing called the slab miser, which is essentially a slab flattener. Um, people build their own slab flatteners and basically they're just a big, huge, router sled basically that you put the slab down on you have a router up there and you just run the router all across to the top of this and it flattens out the slab um, I don't have one of those so I use my sawmill so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna take the sawmill cut a layer off flip it over cut a layer off that and then we'll have a flat slab this one is nine feet long it's pine of course it's nine feet long 20 inches wide and I believe it's just a shade under two inches yeah it's an inch and 15 sixteenths or so so that's what we're going to do let's see if we can get this thing flattened out it's going to take a lot of soapy water cooling the blade off because this has been drying out for uh, two to three years i think a long time ago this was actually a tornado tree a tree that got knocked down in a tornado and uh um, it's gonna it's gonna be pretty i think let's uh, saw into it and see what we've got
you can imagine this is pretty hard on blades y'all check this out I'm not sure if it jumped off or broke I gotta wait till that to stop wait for that to stop till I can check that was really weird because it broke or flew off or something I, I'm not sure yet after it got out of the board I've never had that happen they usually break in the middle of the cut So the blade didn't actually break, it just came off, probably because of all of this buildup right here. I've swapped from diesel fuel to Dawn and dish, well, dish detergent and water because I was getting kind of concerned about all the diesel fuel that was getting airborne in little teeny tiny droplets, aerosolized diesel fuel, I guess you could say. And I was getting kind of concerned about breathing all of that stuff, but as you can see here, Diesel fuel is a far, far superior lubricant and blade cleaner. I went ahead and replaced that blade anyway because the teeth were looking kind of rough. So new blade, um, no more pitch on this one. Let's see what we can do. I think it's time for you to get down. No, I'm just gonna do this. You're gonna do that? I don't think that's a good idea either. Do you? Yeah. Why don't you go play somewhere? Well, those turned out super nice. They're an inch and a half thick, which is a little thinner than I really wanted. But look at that, they're book matched. That's gonna make a super nice table. Okay, guys, now let's go plant an apple tree. A heavy apple tree. All right, man, so the first thing we gotta do is dig a hole. It says dig a hole large enough to encompass the roots without bending or circling. You want to use a shovel to dig the hole or do you want to use the bucket on the tractor? Uh, I want to use a shovel. I think it would be faster to use the bucket. Let's use the bucket. Okay. There's no apples in here. This is just the roots. There's pictures of apples, aren't there? Dirt. Yeah, dirt. To help the apple stay alive. That's a little, maybe a little too deep. I don't know. You put dirt in there. You're tired, aren't you? We gotta go get some water for it. But it's not a Christmas tree. It's not a Christmas tree, you're right. 
we water the Christmas tree when we bring it in, don't we? It's a regular tree and it needs water to grow. You wanna go find some water for it? Let's go. Well guys, that is going to do it for this video. We really appreciate you watching, don't we? Do we appreciate them watching? Mm -hmm. We sure do. Appreciate y'all watching. Uh, this is kind of the first step in a uh, kind of a process that we're doing up that we're doing up here. We're trying to make a little fruit orchard. So this is the first of several apple trees that we're planning on planting. Well, four probably total, and hopefully a pear tree as well. Uh, some blueberries over here, strawberries, uh, maybe a cherry. Definitely a cherry. We already got the cherry, and some more grapes. And I pruned back the muscadines as well because those muscadines been quite some years since they've been pruned and they needed a little bit of attention so hopefully we'll get a crop out of those this year um, and hopefully we'll just have a decent orchard we're also going to run some water lines closer to up here so that uh, i can have uh, easier access to that so i can water things when they are young and growing but this is a honey crisp apple tree we're planning on planting one more honey crisp and two granny smiths up here and maybe maybe something else i don't know we'll just see but that's going to do it for this video that this was another one of those all over the place videos but i appreciate y'all watching and i'll see y'all on the next one